Hi! So I thought I'd introduce you today to a book full of pages with pockets that we're going to sew. We're going to make it. We've got a nice little name badge pocket on the front cover. We've got it so that it can um, hang. We've got a handle so we can carry it. It can stand like that. When it's hanging you can see that you can see all those pages in there. There's plenty of room to fit lots of exciting things in those pockets. If you need it to sit flat when it's not too full, of course, it can sit fairly flat like that. There is room to expand it. Of course, there's room in there as it is, but it can kind of grow a little bit as well if you fill it up with lots of amazing things. So we're going to use this hook and loop for quite a lot of fastenings and things, and obviously for the cover. So I'll just quickly run through the pages so that you get an idea of what we're making. So we've got a nice uh, mesh pocket here. We've got an unusual opening for a pocket here with a different colour behind. We've got lots of little pockets, different angled pockets. This has got a little closure and it's got a little box pleat in it. We've got a little zipper here. We've got just some pockets. We've got a little flap over, a nice big pocket. We've got somewhere that you, if you were going to make it for sewing things, you could keep little uh, pins and needles in something like that or you could put something else just there with some pockets. A different type of zip pocket there, another one with a velcro, a little sort of joey style pocket, elastic, oh what could I fit in there, cotton rails, or maybe I could fit all my little toy cars in there, and another pocket up here, another opening for a pocket there, a large flap over large pocket there, so you can see there's just lots of different varieties of actual pocket making, so these pockets could be used obviously in a book like this to keep lots of little treasures in, you could use it in for sewing things, you could use it for general craft, for painting, for children to have as a little book to keep all their little treasures in, or perhaps a travel book. So it just goes on and on really. Another different opening there. And then on this last one you could put in like a whole set of pencils or paintbrushes or other little uh, tools like crochet knitting hooks, things like uh, knitting needles, crochet hooks, things like that um, would most likely fit in there as well. So really there's so many different uses for a delicious pocket book like this. So I think that that's kind of fun. So I thought I'd get started and show you um, how to make it just page by page. So I'm suggesting that you have, if you're doing getting the pattern from gourmetquilter.com, that you have a folder to keep all your notes in so that you can keep everything together and just gradually work through it. So there's all the material requirements and everything there in the pattern. We're basically using a whole bunch of uh, of fat quarters and I've already cut into some other ones um, and another fabric for my cover. I'm going to make my cover out of this fabric this time. So really quite fabric user friendly you just need to cut you could make you could make it any way you like of course. So um, I'm just going to get started on page one. So we've got page one up here. This is a sample of what we're going to make. So that was our first page in the book, just so that you see it in context, is this one here. So you can see it's got two colours within the opening and then this unusual shaped opening. So we'll just go ahead again in the notes, all the uh, cutting instructions and everything are there, but you get information that you need on how to make the page up. So initially we're just going to start with our squares and we just need to join. So for this piece on the back behind me here with the two colours, it's really just going to be a piece, two pieces joined together to, to create that and then we're going to make the opening out of these. So this is super straightforward, we just need to do a quarter inch seam on there and then press that. So I can go ahead and, I can do that but you don't need to watch me do a quarter inch seam. So, But what I might do is show you how to do this opening before I go too much further um, so that you can see how that's all going to work. So. You may want, if you have a light box, that's a great idea. If you don't, you've probably got a window you can hold something up against. Um, so I'm going to suggest that you would mark this shape. So in the pattern, the shape is all there. All actual size is all reversed, ready for you to trace. So you want to trace it onto the wrong side of the fabric. I'm, I'm suggesting on the wrong side of your fabric that's going to sit on front here. So this one I've made with a slightly different colour on the inside and I'm going to do that this time. I'm going to have my green on the outside and this inside. Because it's all inside you could use something 
Uh, it doesn't have to be one of your really nice fat quarters. It could be some other fabric for a lining. It's kind of up to you on things like that, how you use your fabrics. So I'm just going to position this. So I'm positioning it so that the top edges fit with the pattern. And I'm going to trace onto there. I've got a pencil and a ruler here. And I might need that pretty bright so I can see through. So I'm not sure if you can see, but I can see enough to trace that. So I just really need to make sure that I've got that pretty exact, that line for that, sh sorry, the lines for that shape so that I can stitch on those lines. It's going to be a stitching line that we're marking. If you're working with a dark fabric, you may have a white colored pencil or a chalk pencil, or you might have a white gel pen that you could use if a pencil's not going to show up. I'm just using a regular pencil on mine. So I've just, that's all I need is just to trace that shape onto there. I don't need the light box anymore now. And so I just, now I want to put these two right sides together. And then I'm just going to go, go to the machine and I'm going to stitch right on that line all the way around and then I'll come back and show you how we do the inside and turn it out and everything like that. So I've gone ahead and I've stitched the line that I drew on, my, on the wrong side of my fabric. So my two pieces of fabric are right sides together because we're going to turn one through in a minute. And now we just need to trim away the inside area from that shape. So you want to leave yourself maybe slightly less than a quarter of an inch, but about a quarter of an inch works quite well. Just trim it all the way around inside and remove that center part. I found this is probably just as easy to do with scissors. You could use your rotary cutter, but it's not very big and it could be fiddly. We don't want to cut our stitching. So I just used a regular stitch length, regular cotton thread, regular foot, everything's regular really. So we've got that far, but because we're going to turn it through, we've got to deal with these corners. So the way to do that would be to clip into the corner. Now you must be really careful not to clip your stitching, but you want to go in fairly close to the stitching in the corner. And this will allow you to have a nice turned out corner when we turn it out in a minute, which you will see. If we didn't clip it, it wouldn't be able to pull itself around because it does need to be able to do that. So I'm going to bring the iron over because the next thing is to press it as well. So we've got that. So my green is going to be my right side because that's the one I've decided on. And so what we want to do is, it doesn't really matter which one goes through, but one of them has to go through the hole. Looks a little bit weird. This would be a great way to make a a different sort of looking pocket on a pencil case even or on a clothing or on a quilt. We could have different pockets on everything. I love pockets. So we're going to keep our edges together when we press and we want to make sure that this seam here, sorry I'm making a little bit of a dog's dinner of this, we'll open that because it's quite a long area and I'm just going to press that seam towards the backing at the moment that edge and I'm going to do the same, not the whole way to the corners, but just along the main part of the seam so that we can start seeing where it's trying to sit down. So now we want to bring that back, we want to keep those edges together and we want to press that. So I'm just going to try and finger press it down and then I can take the iron to it. So and then we want to pull these nice and flat. Everything, because we clipped those corners, everything should sit fairly well and then by the time we press all that, that will be sitting amazingly well. So keep all your edges together, try and keep everything sitting nice and square and then we can just press those seams, press all that so that you shouldn't see the other fabric, it should just be that you know it's there. So it's got a nice edge. So at the moment it's slightly unstable because it's um, on a little bit of a, an angle. So what we now need to do to stabilise it a little bit is do some top stitching. So I'm going to do two rows of stitching, just a straight stitch, regular straight stitch, and I'm just going to stitch very close to the uh, fold, probably less than one eighth of an inch away. And then I'm going to stitch about a quarter of an inch away as well. So two 
rounds of top stitching just to make sure that that sits and it's nice and stable. So I'll go ahead and, and do that and then show you the rest of it. So I'm just doing that second round of top stitching. So it's, it's a little bit weird having all this sitting around, but I think it's worth the effort. Worth the weirdness, because I think the pocket is great. A little bit of back stitching just to lock that off. And then I'm just going to give that another quick press, just to make sure everything's sitting really nice and flat. So you can imagine that would be kind of fun to have all sorts, of, you could have tall pockets, you could have wide pockets, angled pockets, there's lots of different things you can do with an idea like that. And then this is our background that was going to be the back of our page there, and then we can just lay that on there and everything should sit really nicely. They should both be the same size, your colour should divide up the centre of that pocket opening. And so that's pretty much the whole page. I'm just going to stitch all the way around the outside edge. We will be losing part of this uh, page at the edge when we join it together into the actual pages. Uh, so we've got a quarter of an inch or more to play with on the edge, so I'm just recommending a stitch all the way around the edge just to hold everything so that everything's sitting really nicely and square. So I'll go ahead and do that and I can show it to you when it's all finished. So I'm pretty happy with my pocket. I've got a whole little pocket thing going on in there. I've stitched all the way around the edge the back has just got the join, I pressed that seam down when I did that. So really that's a pocket page all ready to go. I've got another one up here, looks like I'm making two more. Um, and so that just needs to wait now till we do the, an another page so that we can join them together to make them an actual page in the book. So that was it for pocket number one. We'll see you again with pocket number two.